G'day folks. Well over the years we have filmed hundreds of incredibly talented people across the world. Many of these artists have gone on to produce their own videos as well. We hope you enjoy this great lesson from one of our Colour in Your Life artists. Welcome back and it's time to do the detail on our lizard. He's a cute little thing with his lovely big eyes and we're going to do some scale work first because we've blocked in most of this ready for some detail to start. So we're going to use the let's see, mid grey first so it's 270 and I'm going to start just marking in some little blobs for the scales. Uh, when we first drew him up we did uh, find the sharp bit that would help. We did the crosses first. I'm just showing you another way of doing it. A lot of times you'll find one works better for you than the other. So we put on these and these can be a little bigger looking at that. A little bit of dark sepia, 175 and I'll just bring this very softly in between. So you can see it doesn't have to actually be really really accurate to start with. It's the idea. There's his nose. So now we've got that edge there in. And bring that right down to there. And check these bits here. Okay, nothing too dramatic. But there's a couple of slightly bigger ones I'm going to put in so I don't make them all the same. He's got the odd one or two up here too. If you were doing this totally accurately you could probably brush this down a little so that you could see the marks that you made before from your drawing. And get a couple of bits like that should have glassine under your hand so it keeps it cleaner. That's okay. So coming back to the big fat pencil again. Just put those in. There you go. Now we've got lighter bits here. And then it goes darker up here, so the darker grey. So I'm just going to put some little round scribble stroke bits in here. And I'm going to start putting on, I find it easier to do this than do the dots, so you can try both ways. There's no right or wrong, it's just a matter of preference. What do you like doing? These ones get really small up here. And these ones can be a bit more solid. So we're starting on our look. Plus I'm leaning on my green but doesn't matter. Just remember to wipe it before I lean on something that's not green. Okay, here we go. Make sure this is round enough. It has very nice round eyes, this one. It's what makes it so human-y looking, or intelligent looking. And this end here is a bit rounder as well. All the adjusting as we go, it's no big deal. A little bit of the medium grey. I'll put this in here. So 
So it's a mix of dots and lines. It's a little bit darker up here. Just fade that in very softly with the dark sepia. Look at how thin that line there is. Very thin. So I'll put a few of those light bits over the top. So unlike snake skin that has the skin with the scales, the scales have to stretch Oh, sorry, the skin has to stretch a huge amount for a snake. With the lizards, they don't have to stretch that far, so the scales are a little bit different. Um, they're attached on the skin, so that's why you can see that little ridge around them. With snakes, the skin stretches and sometimes splits to allow big, fat, juicy meals to go in. Lizards aren't that big a pig. But they probably eat more often as well. Okay, so there's a dark bit there, and then here, a bit of skin rather than scale. Probably to allow the eye to close. So we're just building up the tones, light, dark, medium. The edges of these scales are in shadow because the top is catching the light. Because we can't see the detail, we can just put little dots on it. Again, a little bit of backlighting on these ones. And we'll just put that ear bit in as well while we've got the dark. And the second row of scales here. We've got a few light bits just at the front as it comes down here. Make sure his eye's not too big. Now I'm going to work on this and continue doing this and it'll be speeded up a little so that you can just watch as I do it. If you see anything interesting uh, that you want to slow down or stop and rewind, you'll have to do that. But pretty much it's just repeating what I'm doing, dark, light and medium.
Okay. All right, that's enough fast forward. I think I can show you what I'm doing now. You saw what I was doing up here. Now I'm going to use the dark sepia in, in this area here. And you can see that because my pencils are sharp like this, that I can turn it around and find different sharp bits. And I can do thin and thick lines quite easily. So down here, we've got the lines sort of going along that way. So the contour lines help to form the shape of the, uh, the jowl here, or beard or whatever it is. Okay, so I'm going to draw the main area like this so that I can see what I have to change these into. Now, there's a few big ones just under here still and when we were speeded up you would have seen that I put some light bits in as well. Now a lot of people get worried about lining these up, don't be. These are all tiny here. So now that I've got those in, I'll find my little sharp bit. And I'm going to just do an extra line in between. Yep, I'm really neat and tidy today. Here we go. So even if you don't get these 100% right, you just say big or little and away you go. Um, round or circles or squares or ovals, whatever. So you can see it's already starting to look a bit bulgy, which is what we want. Up here, pretty much the same. It's going from here to here to here. A little exaggeration there in the curl, but that's all right, because these lines will disappear. And up here, just because they're small, I'm just going to do some little wiggly lines of cross hatching. That'll give me some guidelines to do the little dots on. So you can see these bits here. It's the same as when you're doing shadows. These little lines are making our brain see 3D instead of 2D. Make sure they're still small and they can go a little bit bigger up here. Now some of these are still small in between. I'll just put a couple of bigger bits there where it's nice and light. Okay, so that's where I'm going to put my dots inside there. Now what's happening up here? We've got some wrinkly bits here. So I'll just put some there don't have to worry about these bits here because just a few little darker bits and that's done. Okay, these here. This is a little bit of extra movement and you can see that the lines go down like that. And then I'll show you here. That's a ridge of light. So I'll just make that lighter. And I think that bit there will do. That can be lighter. On these bits here as well, you see how it's got, if you have a look, there's some little rows of lighter ones. So I'll just do little zigzags to follow it along. I can always break them up with other lines if I want to. Everything has patterns. So it hasn't really got stripes as such, but it's got lighter scales in certain directions and that also will help with the flow like little little worms running along what else have we got here there's some quite big light bits along here too those on and of course 
just here. Look at this. Now, I'm going to do this half and half, so the scale's going this way. I'm going to do white first. Now, we've got those bits there, so this is still that way. And then these. So, let's have a look here. These are biggish ones. And then they go into tiny ones again. So what I meant by half and half is I did those first, okay? But these ones this way, I'm going to go with the dark, just to show you both ways work. Not perfectly straight. Because it is an animal. Doesn't matter if you miss the lines. And this has this way. And these are this way. And then we've got little ones. So we just add extra bits, extra lines in the middle. That's all smaller scales are. Now over here with the light. Now the reason I did these with lines is because when we come in and put the light white over it, bright white, we'll be doing dots. And the light grey will then be the divider. Once you get the hang of doing the contouring, not worrying about making them neat and lined up, it'll start looking realistic. And remember we're aiming here for not photorealism, just realism. If you like the photo that much, just blow it up and stick it on your wall. But here we adjust things. Not only because my photos are really bad, but because we can decide on different backgrounds, different foregrounds, change the lighting, and make it our own picture. So he's looking a bit scaly. Let's add a little bit of interest. Let's get our white 101. I'm just going to come through the top here. Right. A little bit more down here where it's flatter on his face and we've got light, much lighter here. And that looks a little bit too fat there. Let's put some dark in again. One thing working from an angle. <laughs> and pencils that aren't pointy means you have a lot of uh, fixing to do sometimes. So that light goes all the way down to the, over the nostril and all the way over the end of the nose. This is like skeleton teeth, isn't it? There we go. So those ones are lighter and then there's another row above it. A smaller. As long as you leave a little bit of the grey in between, that's fine. Now on the eye we've got a few lighter bits right here. of 
mind's eye. Very straight, almost not scale-like at all. A little bit of a gap there. And light again. See how white that is? We can put a few more in here. Now we can put in, get rid of this zombie eye. It's not really a zombie eye, but it's not as bright as it could be. A little whiter down here. Because this white is going over grey, it's still not the whitest it could be, but it's white enough for our lizard. If you needed to add a little bit more brightness, uh, you could put white gouache on, white acrylic paint. or even um, white hard pastel or soft pastel rather than the pastel pencils. Bit of texture in our stroke here, which may just means that we're using a flat bit of pastel pencil to make circles. A few more here. So his face is starting to come out. A few bits on here. So this is such an ancient lizard. They have a um, prehistoric spine coming out back. It's sort of bony, but it's um, it's not a frill of any sort. You can see it's funny shapes too. Okay, now I'll show you on these bits here. I'll do these bits too. On here, better work organized, work our way down. Being organised means not coming through and going, oh, I'm bored. bored with that bit, let's do another bit. Which quite often I'll do. Or maybe change position so that uh, I have to hold the pencil in a different way so my arm gets a rest. Such a smiley lizard. There we go. A bit of light under here, catching the, the glow. or two back here. Just remember your photo is a split second in time. So if you don't get it exactly right, it doesn't matter. As long as he's structurally sound, he could have moved into that position a few minutes later. With pastel you don't have to do so much detail with the scales. If you were painting it, you would have to spend a little bit more time getting the shape of them accurate. But pastel is very forgiving. Because it's soft edged, it means that you can get away with rough outlines, furry edges, as long as the main part is um, sharp to come forward. It's all good. A bit 
little light there, a little light here. Now down here, it looks like I've missed a little bit of dark. That comes around here. Just a little bit of a wiggle. Because really it's just very wrinkly. I couldn't get any pastel going on that way. I'm just coming the other way. Because what that'll do is just bend the uh, the fibres a little bit upright and going the opposite direction, so they'll pick up more. pencil and just give it a few little dabs there. Once you've got a flat bit you can use that as a, a flat scale area. Go back to the grey, come back in here, I've already got the lines on there, they're not going to disappear very easily. So just patting on some scale shapes and you still want some of that pink to show through as well. Now these ones are pretty much so small they're just little dots. But always keep an eye on the change. There might be little dots there but next to it they might be a bit bigger. That's our wee little lizard working our way down. Now, the corner of these ones here, this corner here, the bottom left hand corner of those scales is catching the light. So I'm just going to put a little bit of that in. And I missed with my pencil, so I'll just go back to the dark and tidy up that edge. Wiggle, wiggle. There you go. Light and dark. Now, here's some claw comes up there. We've got a few very light bits there too. Claw on the top. 